Please be advised, this series contains harsh language and references to potentially triggering material, including mention of suicide, self-harm, abuse of both drugs and alcohol, and deep discussions on religion. Listener discretion is advised. Last time on Ombligo del Diablo. Determined not to let anything else get in the way, Val charged on to Frankie's shack, regardless of whether or not everyone else tagged along. We finally made it, in the dead of night, only for Jamie and Val to find a woman who had slit her wrists and Frankie collecting her blood. After getting the woman, named Angela, healed up and out of there, Val marched right back in to see the void. Merv stealthed. Jamie was a voice of reason. Vincent kept Frankie from drinking angel blood. Oliver nearly committed a murder. And Val took a leap into the darkness. Val was successfully pulled out of the void pit, and Orfeel showed up to make Frankie, and maybe that Angela woman, just disappear. Oh, and we apparently stopped a potential apocalypse, I guess? So, yay? We rejoined the gang a week later. So, does anybody have anything that they wanted to do with their uh, with their characters? Anything they wanted to buy? I believe that people that some people were close last time. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be picking up that uh, that third sphere, yo. Dropping them sweet redirecting magic dimes. No, you. Excellent. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, would it benefit Vincent if I decided to put a couple points into craft to be better at my job, or is am I fine just relying on my athletics down there? If you never want to go above rock holler, then you're fine with just going off athletics. But I could theoretically earn a promotion, get to resources to stuff like that, have more authority and pull around town if I invested into craft. If you knew what you were doing, yes, that would help. All right. Yeah, I'll just spend my remaining nine and put two in craft. I feel like also probably be more representative of you, like being able to use the more ridiculous equipment and also being the one who actually finds like the good vein and being like, I found it. And they'll be like, oh. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, We can only raise one at a time though, Elf, you said? Yeah, there has to be some time spent learning. In the past, I have allowed people to raise things to, to at once, but that was earlier on when it was more representative of people correcting their what their character should have already had. This is representative of you learning as you're working. Gotcha. Well, in that case, I think I'll maybe just spend another three. Drop a point into a cult. I think I'm beginning to get a hang for the fact that this town is fucking weird. I've seen some shit. And it it sucked and it was terrifying, but I don't think it phased me in a in a permanent damage kind of way. You're welcome. (laughs) All right, for saying so, you lose a sanity point. If I wanted to just dump everything into something, I could get either extremely insightful or extremely persuasive. Do you have a charisma five yet? Negative. Your character seems like a charisma five. Yeah, she does. Elf, which spheres do I have access to right now? Oh, I believe you, you gained access to life. Yeah, I think it was life for the surgery. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, right, 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 right. That makes sense. I remember that now. Yeah, I remember that time. I remember. Okay, thank you. I need to figure out what my life one is, because it needs to be not diagnosed. Why does it need to be not diagnosed? Because he can't be too good at his job. That wouldn't make you too good at your job. that just make you magically maybe semi-almost competent? He'll know what is wrong, you just can't fix it. Right. <laughs> Oh, I want to take one in athletics, just because I feel like he's been doing more walking lately. Okay. Oh, hey, you're just as athletic as Murph now. He used to be slightly more in shape. (laughs) All right, so the only thing that I well and truly still absolutely suck at is manipulation. Perfect. I I bought up to Spirit 3. I need a Spirit 3 rope. A Spirit 3 rope. Did you get get all the way up to Spirit 3? Yeah. Remind me what your paradigm is. All I know is it has to do with rocks. Well, it's, it's not just rocks. It's about the uniqueness of places and the uniqueness of different properties of different things in different places. I feel like you should be prime. Well, it started out matter, and our path has really pulled my character more into like dwelling into spirits and the things that make things the way they are more. 
let's see. Okay, so I think the traditional ones might not be appropriate, but let's take a, take a look at them. I do have I have a few ideas for outlandish ones. Fade Ooh, into like the void. Fade, fade into the void might it might be one. Your character fades out and floats around the void for a while. That sounds like it could be cool. Well, the it, two I picked out, I, I need you to approve. It was basically a, a technomanic version of thickening the gauntlet but with like white noise to keep the things away that I don't like anymore. Oh, that's very cool. That would be appropriate. Yes. So that's the two I picked, but I don't, the third, I don't know. I think with three, can't you like choose something to talk to? Well, you can. I, I don't know if that's the direction that you'd try to research in. Okay. So let's see. Summoning spirit allies, banishing spirits, and uh, stepping sideways are the common ones. So void step would make sense with that. Would make I'll a lot of sense for you. Void step. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. Uh, and how does it work? I'm not sure. Do you just it's turn up the static on your radio so uh, so high that you actually fade out? Have you found some like specific minerals that you've like lined your coats with? Yeah. So when you like bombard them with the right level of you know weird radio waves in this area, expand something. Yeah. That the combined cool. AM that waves. Likely. It sounds more likely. I like your description there, Oliver. You've got to be wearing the appropriate thing and then use the appropriate appropriate radio. I'm guessing it has to be tourmaline. Tourmaline dust all over you. You're impregnated into your clothes. I, I would. I think tourmaline jewelry. Okie doke. Can anyone argue for backgrounds? Let me think about this for a second. What I was going to actually ask you if I can use a mind two life one rote that's called placebo. Yes. That basically just makes you feel better, but doesn't actually heal any damage. Yes. Yes, you can. That's like one of the most Oliver things that I think I've ever heard. Yay. <laughs> it's effectiveness. I need to figure out how, how, how it works, though. <laughs> It's, it's effectiveness will be based based on manipulation plus medicine, and the better the line of bullshit that you attach to uh, whatever the thing you're selling them is, the better it'll work. Is there some Outlandish is a bonus. Oh, is it resources possible? for me because I have I'm a I'm a doctor now. You have a job. Yes. What's your resources? Zero. It raises to one. Woohoo! Congratulations, doctor. You're making as much as I do as a minor. Well, it's an honest living. It's actually it's a so... dishonest living, especially with you. a particular method of... Yeah, I, you're I, just I, being Leo and catch me if you can. I would love it if somebody came to you with, with you know, like, a on off arm, and you give them placebo, and they're like, it's fine. Everyone's like, your arm's still gone. He's like, I never had an arm. <laughs> exactly. All right, uh, resources for uh, for you. Anybody else? I do not. So backgrounds so. would be things we can like call on, right? Yes, you're in a situation and you have access to, uh, say, a phone or a pad of paper, and you need something to help you shortly. What is it? I'm not sure I've passed uh, resources one yet. Deaf have not. No, yes, I, uh, <laughs> I think I've finally uh, developed an ally in backgrounds that I can bother putting down. I feel like delivering the letter for the priest probably put me enough in his good column to call him an ally. I would say contact. Yeah, allies are people who will drop everything and come help you. And may not know very much, but he is a person who knows a great deal and is willing to exchange information and ideas. Contact. Okay, I forgot context was a thing. Has Val gained anything new? I am one with the void now? I don't you know might, that... You might argue for a point in the back, uh, the background dream uh, slash nightmare. It's the same thing, but you know. A nightmare is just a dream I don't understand yet. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You're going to take dream one? Yes. What can I do with that, though? Once per session, you can recall a dream about something and replace your skill in some skill with, a dream, with your dream rating. So if I have a zero in a skill, I can use, quote-unquote, the dream... To put a, use a one instead. Yes, but you have to have to give a uh, two sentence description description of what you dreamed that that that, uh, that translates over. Oh, dude, you know I'm all over that. Excellent. All right, for anybody who was not awarded a background, do you guys have a ritual that you'd like to learn? Describe to me what this could constitute. A ritual in some way involve it involves your paradigm and takes some time to perform. Its duration does not exceed its uh, casting time, so to speak. And its casting time is always in the vein that it cannot be performed within a time-pressured environment. Mainly, any time that it would be disruptive to the action to go and take a piss, you cannot use a ritual. Any time that, uh, that you could, you can. So scrying is a good ritual. Healing can be a good ritual if you're not worried about doing it quickly. Mind reading can be if you've got somebody that's just sort of hanging out. Dream quests, enchanting things. Okay. Think, 
Things who, whose duration is likely to be allowed to be permanent, those can be made into rituals. A thing that might work is permanently enchanting an object. For example, learning an enchantment for your gun so that it shoots things that normally can't be shot. I like oh, that. Hell, the, you can the make... whole, whole combat build here is just to make him able to just... His gun works normal on stuff. <laughs> yes. Shoot uh, ghost. <laughs> the, a ghost shows up and you say, I don't care what it is, you shoot it, it's dead. Exactly. I, okay. I want that. Okay. You will have to find things of great value in order to use to enchant your gun. Th this ritual might involve charity. For example, you know, you find something of great value and, mag and magical worth and giving it away is the ritual that enchants your gun. But either way, it's going to have to cost something hard to find, valuable, and of some sort of metaphysical significance. Okay. I, I can dig that. And <laughs> the, ritual's, uh, the ritual's name is Enchant Weapon Hyper Real. Who else did not get a background? Myself. All right. Perhaps your card shenanigans. Perhaps. That would make a lot of sense. I feel like that is just a thing that has fascinated Murph, and that would be card sharp. When you're sitting at the table, the results of card games just change. I like it. You you can't con control exactly how. You can only control weather and which direction, like who wins. But yeah. You've realized rooting for one side usually makes them win. <laughs> Yes. This is true. I can't wait to find tarot cards somewhere and start doing some readings. I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> so making the tarot card reading come out good or bad for the person would be very much in that ritual. Making it come out with useful and true information is a slightly different ritual, but it is still, it's still yep. within the same spheres. <laughs> okay. Okay. Does anyone else have have any roads or rituals they need to fi figure it out? Not roads or rituals, but did we get any sanity? I mean, any willpower and or... Paradox back at the end of the last game. All of your temporary willpower has been restored. Huzzah! So Only all to be taken one of them away again immediately. And I think that everybody's sanity was resolved. No, no, I wasn't. I was thinking about paradox. Paradox. Because I have four, paradox. Four, four paradox and one uh, willpower left. Paradox one is restored. Okay. Uh, Back to completely normal for me. And for willpower, yes, one aggravated willpower heals. Cool beans. Definitely have a plan for a future thing to like. I don't know. It's something we have to workshop. But like, I see my friends are kind of going insane, and Murph has a little bit of experience watching people go crazy. Uh -huh. and so I would like to, you know, eventually come up with something to try to help them not lose themselves. Okay. And in your experience, has anything worked? No, I know what doesn't work. <laughs> and I know there's some science that can fix people, but it's something I'm going to have to workshop. You have learned how not to help the insane. Correct. All right. What did Val pick up? Oh, yeah. A point of dream. Yeah. Okay. And also she do spooky magic now. Oh, did you, did you uh, level up uh, one of your spheres? I did. I took two in spirit. Would have taken three, but I'm a couple of points off. Oh, okay. That's right. Damn it. You Let's can't see. Did you the void with me yet? Oh. Or else I would have done some real shit. I don't know if, if Val is ready to visit the void. I want to go back, please. <laughs> Val, is, Val is quite lucky to have not had that, that ability because she might not return. Anyway. Uh, did you pick a rope for it? I, I mean, I picked from the ones I didn't know we could just fucking can, make them up. <laughs> you can make them up, especially if none of them fit. Those are just for suggestions and for new characters. Uh, Summon an Abyssal Watcher. Might I make did sense. I did grab that one. So that is your shadow. Ooh, I love it. When you drink a certain solution that you have figured out how to mix up, made of what you believe to be some a powder of a, sh of a shooting star, your shadow will detach and follow your orders most of the time. That's Sometimes, awesome. Especially with us occupying the same space. What happens if I do that while Fowl is drunk? <laughs> I need to know, because... <laughs> You will find out do when it. that happens. I need to do it now. Guys, we just need to get drunk. I, I need to summon my shadow. I need to see what happens. This is an experiment. Well, no, Val would never do that. Sam, Sam wants Val to do that. Val would never purposefully do that. The shadow is not tangible, but it is able to observe and report. Ah. Does the shadow have a voice? And if so, can it, like, I don't know, sound like Sam Elliott? The shadow whispers in negative space. Ah, I don't like it. So it sounds like negative Val. Negative Val! It sounds like holes cut in the background noise of the world that just seems to be a sound. So it's going to be the perfect duet then. Got it. Yes. It also works with your echo. The echo of your voice. Huh? You can talk to the echo of your voice. 
So if you are in a canyon and you shout and it echoes back, but if you are attempting to use this and you and you bring a horn made out of a uh, particularly altered animal and you shout your question through it, the voice that echoes back will not be the thing you said, but an answer to it. So you shout hello and your own voice echoes off the canyon walls and, and, and comes back as hello. And it sounds like Adele. But... If you ask a question of your echo, it will come back and tell you an answer. What's down in that there valley? There are three men who wait to die. Sweet. I also took a sense true nature. That seemed, it was iffy. None of the spirit ones really work for spirit one. None of the spirit ones really worked with Val, so sense true nature seemed the closest. Your other is life? Yes. Detect relation might work. You can analyze some sort of a uh, DNA off of the subject, any sample you, you can find. Fucking and, done. And you can find out what it's related to. The closest to relation that you, that you have of anything. Life one, spirit one. You can even detect uh, step parents. Yes. By the theory of associative DNA. I do well, believe I am the only pleb who has not unlocked a sphere other than entropy. But you are very good at it. Go dive into a void. Is this true? I've got I three blips in one thing. Yeah, actually, that's true. Both of you are at three of your primary sphere and haven't unlocked another. Also, you are the two that have suffered the least madness. Yeah, that's true. Those two might be related. Join us. (laughs) Join us on the insanity with all the fun magic. Okay. You want to go jump in a void? Join us, Ashley. Perform dangerous and unnecessary surgery. (laughs) I help. Do you just have to find your own particular kind of madness? You know, find out what disturbs and scares and terrifies your character, and then just go, you know, swim around in it. Fun facts. Fun facts. Uh, first, two sentences of description of your character, then a fun fact. We will start with Ginger, then. All right. My name is Ginger. I am playing Murph, your best friend and slurpy sharer. Fun fact about Murph. Murph writes short stories in her spare time, but doesn't share them because she's afraid no one will take them seriously. Excellent. Jamie. My name's Matt. I play Jamie. Jamie is a traveling scientist miner. She goes around to different places around the world and exploits their wealth and then moves on to the next place. Fun fact about Jamie, she really loves skee-ball and bowling and has a pilot's license. Excellent. And Val. Hello, I am Sam. I play Val, the mad scientist, with the emphasis being on mad at this point in both ways. And Val's fun fact this week, Val's favorite movie is something you would not expect. Or maybe you would. It's Homeward Bound. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's not Jurassic Park, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were all thinking it. Um, uh, I was going to say Ghostbusters. Yeah. Oh, no, no. That's, that's she true. likes Ghostbusters, but it's not, it's not her favorite. No, just, Homeward just Bound because is her of favorite. Things. And she refuses to watch it in front of anybody else because she always cries at the end. That is amazing. Mm-hmm. Vincent, what movie makes you cry? I'm playing as Vincent Braddock. He's a dried up, entering middle-aged former thug for various organized crime organizations just trying to do anything but that again it's fun fact for this week uh, also had to do with a movie back in uh, 87 when vincent was 12 uh, he went to go see full metal jacket with a babysitter and when he started crying when one of the guys at uh, boot camp ended up dying he got smacked on the back of the head by his babysitter who he thinks was one of his aunts or something, but he isn't quite sure. It didn't really hurt that bad, but he remembered it. And he thinks that's the last time he cried in a movie. So he learned not to show his emotions anymore. That's tragic. Yeah. So now he has to come watch Homeward Bound with Val. Got it. <laughs> Get sloppy uh, drunk. Damn it. That's the end of the campaign. We all watch Homeward Bound together. <laughs> yes. Lose our very last sanity. My name is James. I play Oliver Halderson. He is a man in his 50s, a little paunchy, uh, always dressed in the button down and uh, slacks, uh, likes to think that he's looking suave. My fact about him is that he married right out of high school. He was happily married for three years. And then how many years was he unhappily married? Uh, none. You can't just leave it on that cliffhanger there. Uh, Ooh, his, his wife left him in uh, to oh, the beyond the veil. Oh. Yeah. Intentionally or accidentally? It was a very sudden illness that got her. Okay. 
and uh, Oliver just can't shake the fact that it might have been uh, what he did prior to it. Interesting. Is there more to it? It was just the beginnings of his business going bad and the cons beginning. Huh. He started hurting other people, thinking, no, it doesn't really hurt anybody. Okay. It has been a week. A week of hard labor for Vincent and for Oliver, uh, largely tidying up his shop and finding blood in places he didn't I think that he could possibly have left it. <laughs> trying to retool some of this ancient equipment. I, I hope with a, someone else's Oliver. help. Yeah, that's that's me. Taking broken things back to my lab and fixing them and then bringing them back to Oliver so he has at least some equipment that functions properly. And in this time, Ginger has been spending a while talking to 213, who has been working on his house. What you could call his house, a used outhouse that has been slowly coming back uh, back together into, into some semblance of, of a shack, at least. Well, I mean, home is where the heart is, and I'm putting a lot of heart into that shack, so it's got to be at least somewhat a home now. Wow, that was so cute, and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> what is your craft skill? Uh, not very good. Let me look. Two. Two is actually pretty good. Oh, well, JK, then. You have learned some things, uh, some things from your father, apparently. Indeed, uh, that is why I took the two in craft. <laughs> yeah, and you guys have been doing something remarkable with this place, and it is looking like a cozy little a little room. The floors are polished, but it feels like there's something wrong with the wood and you can't place it. Hmm, like wrong how? Like it just doesn't sit right, or what, what kind of wrong? When you stand on it, the creak that it gives is a little bit too late and too long and slow, vaguely reminiscent of a groan. Huh, that's pretty sus. I mean, I know an experiment. I would love to run on this. Also, its color, no matter what color of stain you put on it, is always just too gray. It's flat and shiny, but the wood just takes on this gray hue, and it seems to suck the color out of any stain you put over it. Can I ask 13 where we got this wood? Well... I found an old building a bit off the road, a mile or so east of here. It was falling apart, a bunch of old lumber. We figured nobody would miss it. Okay, this is going to sound kind of crazy, but hear me out. Does it sound to you like the floor is crying just a little bit? It does. And that is like kind of haunted, right? I wouldn't put it past myself to have managed to find a cursed house to build my room out of. 13, what did we say about positive self talk we gotta work on that well then i'd be surprised to find out that the very floor of my house was inhabited by the souls of the damned <sighs> i i don't think mm, i don't know if you like accidentally picked up cursed wood or i don't know we'll figure it out i think actually jamie has a radio that can hear ghosts so maybe we could borrow her radio or borrow her, see if the floors actually talk other than making groaning noises. Well, either way, it's my floor now, so they're just they're gonna have to deal with me. Yeah. I'm sure they'll think better of hanging hanging around after a while. What? But how oh, hang on. We're gonna pause. What do you mean that even ghosts will not want to hang out with you? You are lovely company thirteen. Some have said that. But, I don't know, people just uh, don't like the, the way their lives are going when they're around me. Have you ever tried the whole think-it-be-it strategy? I'll do my best, and I will, I will do what I can to be hospitable to these ghosts. Just think really positive thought, put out all of the good vibes. Good vibes. I understand. Thank you, Murph. You're welcome. He, he kind of laughs, uh, laughs a little bit. All right, on to this night in particular. Saturday night at the bar. Mrs. Thorson is serving up the drinks. It's a smaller crowd, so at some point she's gone over to your table and, and in, in invited you all to play a, a game of gin, if you don't mind her getting up now and then to serve a beer. Yes. Oh, we welcome the company. Your breath of fresh air as always, Miss Thorson. How much you had to drink already, Oliver? Why have not my lips have not sullied themselves with alcohol this evening? Lies. As she looks and says, apparently not enough. <laughs> He He's just nursing his first beer. As she comes and sits down, and she starts dealing out the cards. As she does, you notice something that you, ha that, that you hadn't seen before. Probably because you've just never looked, but there is a long scar on her left wrist. Well, I ain't bringing that up. 
I guess I would like to How long medicine that? that to see if it's a, like, does it look like a self-inflicted wound? Mm, or uh, <laughs> yeah, Just to know whether I should inquire about this or have it be like, oh, let's not talk about that. It is clearly very old. Uh, I will say that a foul definitely doesn't start out being there. She comes in later. After like a week of isolating herself in her lab. Vincent would have probably come around at some point and uh, gave a knock on the door and hollered. If, if she didn't want to talk, that was okay, but he have tried. Excellent. So, Oliver, one. Yes. Take a point of paradox damage. <sighs> <laughs> Two. Since you have five successes, here are the things that you know. One, this is definitely a self-harm scar. Two, it is deep. Three, it is very old. From the look of it, decades. Mm. Yeah, Oliver would glance, gather that, and, you know, feel the universe is upset with him for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> like like he normally does and uh, then go back to dealing cards your paradox damage comes in the form of an empathetic pain in your wrist and a, a vague sense of unease hopelessness yeah oh, just shakes out his wrist getting a little bit older so what are we playing is it oh we're not dealing this time yeah here, here's the cards of course she starts dealing out the cards and and she asks each of you you know how you've been Adapting to small town life. It's been so, been so good to see around so often. Uh, you know, takes some getting used to, but uh, not angry when I don't hear car horns waking me up every morning. It's uh, relaxing sometimes. I came here for tourmaline, but I haven't found any yet. But I've made a lot of friends so far, which is different. Usually just find what I'm looking for and move on to the next town. But uh, I've been really enjoying it here so far. You know, the things that haven't driven me mad. <laughs> By the way, Vincent was clearly uh, not mentioning everything when he he said that it was relaxing. He was kind of like eye shifting when he said that. <laughs> <laughs> so shady. Okay. So Val is showing up later? Yes. Okay. Kind of sheepish. That's part of why she was staying in the lab for so long. Uh, she knows she's probably pissed off her friends a bit. <laughs> Does not have the emotional maturity to just uh, talk it out. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Say, Muff, what 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 do you think of this kind of life? I mean, I've been in these towns once or twice throughout my life, but you're you're youngin. What I, is it like for you? Young, you, I don't like the way you say youngin. Like I'm sorry, yourself. young lady. But, mm, I'll take it. Uh, yeah, kind of like what Vincent said. It's like quiet, which is kind of nice. I don't know. I've been in small towns before. It's not not really that big a deal. I'm. I think the weirdest part is that, like, I'm still here, if that makes sense. So here? Yeah, like, I haven't moved on to somewhere else. I don't know. It feels weird to sit in one place. Well, you've got a, you've got a lot of years to do that. And I found that there's, there's always a something new, if you keep on looking. Yeah, adventure will find you, etc. I'm just, I don't know. I don't find myself to be particularly good at sitting still. And this is, you know, <laughs> exemplified by the way that she's sitting, you know, at whatever table, like, like kicking the floor, you know, like mm -hmm. wiggling. <laughs> mm -hmm. She looks at the cards in her hand and her eyes widen a bit and she puts down all of her cards and says with a somewhat astonished voice, a, a gin. Hey, congratulations. Well, how about that? <laughs> Oliver just looks at Murph. Hey, Murph. I look back innocently. Yes. <laughs> hey, Murph, uh, want to dance? Uh, uh, sure. She grabs you by the hand and pulls you away from the table over to, to the jukebox and and puts on some uh, something lively from, you think, the 70s or 80s? Uh, uh, well, I, I need to know what song it is now, because this is the kind of music that Murph actually listens to. She puts on the Sex Pistols. Ah, good choice. Okay, carry on. <laughs> Okay. Um, oh, nice. She's kind of punk. Well, she went through a short phase of that, probably in her 60s. And leaving the uh, the rest of you at the, at the table, looking over your hands that have nothing sensible in them, you have this old woman dancing with Merv and, and a, uh, a few of the uh, the miners and a couple of uh, a shopkeeps, the seamstress, start joining in on the dance floor. She never Saffron dances with me when I ask. Jamie? Is Saffron there? Saffron is, yeah. She's just uh, gone over uh, over to uh, to join the dance floor. Murph is not a particularly skilled dancer, but what she lacks in skill, she makes up for in enthusiasm. Excellent. And that is definitely what uh, what is required for the moment. Jamie, would you care to cut a rug? Sure, let's dance. Oliver does not know how to dance very well. 
<laughs> he starts busting out like a disco. Just for the hell of it, everyone give me a charisma performance roll. Yes. That's only if you're taking part, right? Right. Hey. Is Vincent... Is uh, Vincent excuse uh, you, Vincent? Sitting back you and leering. You know full well that if I don't see you stand up, I'm just going to turn to you and say, Vincent, 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 <laughs> Vincent. See, Oliver saw that coming and is like, well... <laughs> <laughs> no hope. Let's go. Ain't got a partner and it ain't Johnny Cash. I don't dance. Vincent, you know you want to. It's a bop. Mm-hmm. Don't give me that look. Real All right. animal handling. <laughs> Charisma persuasion? <laughs> Charisma persuasion versus Vincent levels of curmudgeon, which I believe are six. You're going down. <laughs> All right. yeah. She's just going to inflict hella willpower damage on you. <laughs> Oh my god, my curmudgeon levels are over 9,000. Okay, maybe you're not going down, but I'm going to try. sure are. So, with seven successes worth of curmudgeon, Vincent manages to uh, seem too disparaged by the thought of dancing, and eventually Murph realizes that, that there's so many other people waiting for her that are going to be disappointed, and gives up right around the time that a man walks in. Wait... We, we have something very important to, to deal with, which is how good oh. uh, Jamie and I are dancing. Yes. <laughs> which I want to I wanna present as one success and zero successes, but I think it's he's doing a disco and trying to teach Jamie how. Yeah, and I think uh, Jamie's not learning, and it looks like some sort of miming, maybe? <laughs> like, I'm trapped in a box? Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure... <laughs> Pretty sure that's how that's going. No, like, you, you gotta you move your finger and your hip at the same time. <laughs> pulling on an invisible rope. So as Val is approaching, finally showing up in town, she sees this man in in a long black coat that she hasn't seen before. He has a hat that's shading down o- over his eyes, wearing cowboy boots with spurs, as he has a horse tied up outside. Whoa! I was about to say poser, but then what? <laughs> Okay. So was I. I was about to. It's the exact same thing. I was gonna be like, Val's just sort of sitting there thinking, God, somebody's taking this too seriously. A horse is not an impractical means of travel around here, given the sparsity of the mechanical parts, as you, as you have learned, and also the terrible condition of the roads. It's not so much the horse as it is the way of dressing plus the horse. Yes. Yeah. If he was dressing it's, like it's that without a horse, package. we'd be. We'd be really up to he'd, him. He'd, he'd still be a poser and trying too hard. Yeah, Val's just going to give him a glance. Uh, are we both approaching the door at the same time? Is this my anxiety nightmare? He's approaching the door first. You're approaching from behind him. Yeah, no, Val's not going to do anything. As he steps in, he, lo- he looks around and sees there's only one person not dancing. And he goes over and, well, first he, he walks to the bar and pours himself a beer, puts a bill on the table, then walks over and sits down next, next to you and takes a drink from his beer. He just sort of looks at you like he's sizing you up. I imagine I've seen looks like that before and they often didn't end well. Sometimes. It either ended up with you getting into a fight or getting hired for a job. Anything I can do to help you, friend? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. And I think so. You work in the mines, don't you? I do as much. Would you be interested in making a substantial sum of money? Typically. Depends what it's for. He takes a, a long drink off of his beer, and, and you can see that there is a sort of a, a spilt wine bir- a birthmark that covers most of his right hand. He looks to be about his 40s, maybe? About Vincent's age. About Vincent's age. A little bit less exposed to the elements. His hair and the nails appear to be well-groomed. Other than the fact that he seems to be covered in dust from the road. He says, I know a man who might have discovered a vein of tourmaline that would offer a significant wealth. Not attached to any of the mines right now, but the plan would take four or five men to carry out. Do you think you have the connections? You might be able to get get a few of your co-workers from the mines to uh, go to work on a Sunday? We'd split the profits. Might be able to do as much. Doesn't sound like dishonest work by any means. You want me to call my boss, Senor Suarez? He might be able to... No, that wouldn't be appropriate. I've already had business dealings with him, and at the moment he owes me a substantial sum. Really? Struck me as a straight shooter. He's come to be reliant on others for a quick turnaround in difficult conditions. Either way, my deal is not with him. It is with you. 
I don't see what interest you would have in giving the bulk of your newfound wealth to your boss. Just interested in making sure we got the right men for the right job. You just need strong backs, that's it. I need miners. A few strong backs will do, what we, but I need a couple men with experience and bravery. All right, and all we're looking to do is uh, haul some out. No more, no less. Just a Sunday. Well, should only take one day, but there'll be blasting. Of course. I'll introduce you to my associate, if you would come with me. And he stands up. I uh, give a holler over to um, whoever in the group is nearby. I, you know, I'll actually try to meet Oliver's eyes because I imagine he most gets like the I'm working on something idea yeah. by looking at me. So I'll give him a quick like, uh, you know, gesture with my hand, like, be right back. Composure insight, Oliver. Okay. I just want to know if I see this gentleman. Also make a composure insight with a reasonably higher difficulty. Two successes. Yeah, you notice. It was kind of rough, because after watching Jamie do the dance that I was doing, I realized how foolish Oliver looked. (laughs) You have been trying to mildly guide Jamie into not doing the robot or pulling the invisible rope, and you see Murph does not notice. Uh, Oliver notices briefly the uh, the two men right as they exit. Uh, Murph, you noticed the guy walk in, but you didn't notice him walk out. Alrighty, because you know that sounds like a stranger, and nobody stays a stranger from Murph for very long. That is true. Aggressive Uh, friendship. Well, I mean, you still have yet to meet half the town. Not for lack of trying. That's true. But when you look uh, look up again, they're gone. Uh, I think Oliver will, to Jamie, say, pardon me a moment. You work on those moves. I'm going to go hit the head and uh, go to, at a distance, follow Vincent. Composure still. Why am I so bad at this? Really? Being coordinated and composed and Oliver's bad at it? What? <laughs> So uh, zero successes. I was yes. trying to. I'm not anywhere near them, but I was hoping to be, you know, within line of sight. At an old shack on the edge of town that you're pretty sure was a vacant. The man in the in, in the coat knocks twice, and a guy answers the door. He has wide bloodshot eyes, and he's wearing a bandana over his face. He looks up at the man, and he says, "Did did, did you find someone?" And the guy nods. He says, I'd "Like to introduce Vincent." Vincent, this is Rachma. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Here, uh, uh, you got some mining to do. Rachma nods excitedly, and he he says, "Yes, yes. There's a, spa- a place in the old mines. I I will need I will need some I will need some men to extract it. I, I will gladly share the benefits." All right. Well, I might be able to help you out with that. I work over at the currently running mine. Imagine I might be able to get a few more people together. Made some runs in a few days on the job. Yes, I I have I have the explosives, but I. I will I'll need to obtain a suitable drill and hmm. a suitable drill and and it'll take it'll take four men. It should be substantially rewarding. And do you think that half for me and and then ten percent for uh, for each of these workers would be amenable to you? I uh, scratch my chin a little bit. Is this where Oliver's composure fails? And then he goes thirteen. <laughs> So the man in the coat is, is standing outside the shack, just staring at Oliver, not saying a word, just looking at him. Like Oliver is still like trying to act nonchalant, like he hasn't been seen. Oh yeah, I, I basically like walked past three times, like a block away, like whistling, and then I'm like, oh, he's still looking at me. <laughs> I imagine that'll probably do fine. Good, good, yes. Tomorrow, bright and early. All right, well... It's late at night. I'll do my best. Are you going to be able to get that drill? Or do I need to try and ask if one of my boys own one apart from what they've been given? Oh, yes, if, if you could find a way to, to borrow it. I, I don't like to speak with too many people in town. I think to myself that I kind of get why. I'll see what I can do. But he... I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like this is getting sour. You know, this is uh, going south. Not interested in getting my hands dirty in anything other than uh, than dust. You understand? Yes, yes, of course, of course. All uh, right. Just, 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 just bring them in the morning, and 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 we'll start the old the old mine shaft here. And he hands you a map. Am I uh, am I able to do anything to try and get a read on how upfront this guy is being about his desires? Give me a wits composure check. That is five successes. Five successes. There is something unsettling about him. He doesn't seem like the sort to be brave enough to cheat you, but he's definitely also the sort that's not going to be entirely forthcoming with information. There's a catch here, and you have no idea what it is. All right. Now, 
before we shake on this, I'm going to need one thing from you. He says, shake? He seemed confused. Before I uh, give you my firm commitment, I just want one thing. One thing only. Uh, yes? For you to be 100% clear and forthright about any information you have which might affect my job tomorrow. Can you do that for me? Uh, the mines, they're old. It is some some skill to 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 get this out safely. Yes, there are there are dangers in the old mines. Do I sense that that was was that what was nagging me about his uh, manner? Was that what felt evasive? Does he seem less so when he says that? I mean, you you get the feeling that's the best you're going to get. The fact that he didn't explain much about the details of what the danger is is you know concerning. You hope it's just you know the roof falling down and crushing you to death, but yeah, clearly. <laughs> All right. And of course, I'll, the fact that you've never seen the man's face. I'll come around. I'll see what we can do. And uh, like I said, things go sideways. I'm gone. He nods excitedly and, and claps. And he, and he says, yes, yes, I promise you, we will acquire great wealth. Great wealth. All right. I'll hold you to that. I'll uh, see you as soon as I round up those men. He smiles and claps excitedly again. I think that Vincent would be having a much harder time with this whole arrangement if, uh, you know, this wasn't probably like the eighth shadiest person he'd ever dealt with in a in a backroom deal. <laughs> yes, this is this guy barely even makes the list with some of the creeps you you work for. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just like, oh yeah, yeah, it's fine. Just a regular back alley weirdo. As you step out, the man in the in, in the coat hands you a card with an address on it, and he says. I want to thank you for helping me out with this. If you should ever need something from me, just come to this address and ask, and I'll do my very best to see if I can work something out. In uh, the lines of work that require that people just go asking about at bars, I imagine Vincent usually doesn't ask for names, which is why I didn't earlier, but I do take a peek at what it says on the card. It says Samuel Mammon, and then it has an address in town. Does it give a line of work stated? It does not. All right. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll put that in my wallet. Samuel Mammon, and then under it, it says, here to help when most needed. All right. I'm less comfortable with this guy who seems to know what he's doing. So I just give him a nod. If you don't mind me asking, why are you working for that guy? You're asking this to Samuel? Yeah, yeah. What are you, what are you doing recruiting for Rachma in there? He looks confused and says, working for him? No, no, I... He asked me... For assistance, and I have offered it. It is hmm. so. You're something of a middleman around here, then. You could say that. I connect people that need with people that have. I'll keep that in mind. You take care of yourself, all right, Samuel. I shall. You as well. He turns and he, and he walks away directly up to Oliver. Oh, oh, hello. I saw you down there, but I am just so lost. Where is the uh the cl the the clothes shop. Is uh, it is it this way or that way? I keep coming back and forth. He smiles and, and says, "I would be pleased to escort you. Come with me. It's this way." Oh, oh yes. Well, I've been meaning to get in there. Look at these sleeves. They're fraying. Yes, of course. That is. Is that all that you're looking for? There's some sleeves. Oh, at the moment, I'm sure I can. I'll have more for them, lady. Maybe a custom shirt. Maybe something with a little more color. Well, I'm sure that the clothier could be help with that uh, perhaps more so during business hours but oh uh, and i don't believe we've met my name is samuel mammon oliver halderson you're right it is very late <laughs> why don't you just point out that building there and then i'll, I'll uh, get back to the bar my friend left and i thought why I mean, why am i even in this bar without my very good friend have you met vincent we've been acquainted oh very good well i don't know that i like oliver talking to this guy i am worried that that will end badly <laughs> oliver has a lot of needs <laughs> he walks over to the clothing shop and and he he uh he says uh, you're the new doctor in town aren't you uh yes i've only treated a couple of patients but i feel i can make a difference in this very fine town well should you need more medical equipment or anything oh, else, absolutely. else for, for your business he hands you when a card. I... Oh, why, thank you, Mr. Mammon. I will surely need something from you. I know that it is very hard to find the supplies I am in need of most of the time in the best of days, and I am 
currently without a source of funds. But That's... I'm sure I will get back to you. If money is the only need, we can certainly work something out. Well, money is but a means to an end. Absolutely. If you have opportunities, I'd be glad to hear them. But for now, I shall uh, bid you good night. I hope to hear from you soon. Absolutely. He turns and, and he uh, reaches in, into his pocket and he brings out a large stack of money. And he says, perhaps a loan to get you started. And he, I will get back to you <laughs> uh, about that. He holds out the money. Looks like about a grand. Resolve composure. Yep. <laughs> I want to not take this money. <laughs> uh, this is going to be resolve plus finance. Oh, it's a composure plus finance. Composure plus finance. I got two successes. I don't like this person using money magic on me. You find yourself holding a thousand dollars as... Hey, uh, Elf? Was that a spell? That was not a spell. Okay. I, I, I wanted mean... to know if I could redirect it. <laughs> so that you take the money instead? <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, know. <laughs> Maybe I, I worry about my friend. <laughs> uh, I well, worry okay. about me too. It is ambiguous whether there was magic there or not. Are you curious? Do you have a detect magic ability? Um, I don't think I necessarily do. I, I have tap node magic armor and redirect magic. I could tell if, he, if this man's carrying node around with him, but... Uh, well, yeah. then you can say I redirect it if it's magic. Okay, I'll, I'll do that next time. I have money and a strange feeling that it would have been rude to say no. Yes, of course. You would not have wanted to put him out so by refuse, refusing his his uh, his such a generous offer of, of what you desperately need right at this moment. I definitely tried to refuse several times, but uh, didn't didn't stick. You, you tried to refuse with a hand on the money. Then he turns and is left, and you have the money in your hand. I uh, stuff it in my pocket and turn around and hurry back to the protection of my friends to hopefully not inform them that I am suddenly in debt. Okay. Val. Yes. You have come into this place, and you are the other one who saw the three of them leave, and the rest of your friends seem to be dancing up a storm. Yeah, Val's going to try to sneak to the bar. She's still not 100% sure. No one even glances at you. They seem to be so caught up in their fun, they have forgotten about you entirely. That kind of hurts. It does a bit. <laughs> Ow. But okay. Kind of what she wanted, but also kind of not. Emotional maturity Val does not have. <laughs> and do you pour yourself a drink? Like, I, not even Angela notices me. Angela seems to be, to be having the most fun at all. She has stripped off her coat and her shoes. And she is leading the dance, her exceptionally tall and lanky form swaying back and forth to the music. It is impressive that someone of, of her age still, uh, still has this much energy. Yeah, then Val's going to pour herself a drink and leave the cash on the counter. Okay. Just kind of uh, sit in a corner, okay. watching. I definitely uh, try to lead this dance, but concede to her expertise. Oh, no, she, she's happy to let you lead. Uh, you just have difficulty containing her energy. Uh, okay, express yourself. Val, you have also noticed, uh, noticed the scar on her arm. Val don't say shit. <laughs> She's not that inept. After a little while passes, the dancing dies down a bit as uh, Angela has to go back and, and tend to the bar and gather up the money. And actually mix a, a few people drinks that didn't want beer or straight whiskey. You know, the, the, the three people that wanted something more complicated. And Vincent makes it back in to, to meet up with the rest. I don't say anything, but I'm going to get a, another beer and I'm going to sit down next to her and I'm going to just awkwardly bring my hand up and put it down on her shoulder, pat her a couple of times and then put it back on my lap and take a long sip. And how does Val respond? <clears throat> she clears her throat. She's near tears. So would the wannabe cowboy want? Oh, him? Got a friend looking to do some mining tomorrow. I'm gonna make some calls tonight. Figure out uh, if I can get eaten and some of them boys over there. Anybody from the mine who knows a few things. But, uh, I don't know, Jamie might be able to help too. She's been in a mine. Says there might be money in it. Ah, well, uh, be careful. Mole people, I guess. Yeah, I figured I'd bring my piece. Awkward silence. You want a drink? I know you got one, but you want a drink. Yeah, 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 no, another drink will be fine. 
Yeah, I'll uh, I'll get her something a bit harder. Do I see Val enter the bar? You see Val once the dancing dies down. You see Val over in the corner. But you are stopped by Saffron on the way. Oh, okay. And she sort of lightly grabs her by the shoulder and leans in and smiles and, and says, I've I've had some luck. Uh, come and see me tomorrow in the shop. Oh, okay. So you finished it then? Yeah, I'm just polishing it a bit. Uh, they should be ready by late afternoon. Oh, okay. Perfect. I'm sure you did a fantastic job and that they are beautiful. She smiles and, and says, I think that you'll be well off for a while. I just kind of like smile and nod. As she walks out of the bar. Perfect. I am going to go save Val from her awkward silence. There are no silences when Murph is around. Awkward no, or otherwise. never. <laughs> Make my way over there. And, you know, if Vincent is already at the table. Hi, Vincent. Welcome back, Val. Oh, oh, that stings. <laughs> the way she says Val, it stings. <laughs> Val physically flinches. Nice to see you, uh, you know, out and about and not hermiting. Uh, y- yeah, hey, Murph. Does she look like she has slept and or is well? Yes and no. Perfect. So did you, like, bring back a dinosaur or what took so long? Just busy at the reserve, uh, I guess. So. Busy yeah. doing what? Dinosaur? at her shadow. <laughs> Uh, no, just with, you know, the animals. Had a couple of coyote pups that got orphaned, you know. Do I believe she is telling the truth? I don't think that you even have to roll on this one. Isn't isn't yep, Val's so. uh, subterfuge one? She's half lying. <laughs> the coyote pups thing is true. She was also doing some other shit. Yes. Hmm. Okay. So, coyotes. All right. Sure. Hey, uh, Vincent, what did your new friend want? Looking to get a couple miners together to uh, gig outside of town. So there might be some tourmaline. Figured I might run by Jamie when she's done dancing, too. Ooh, that sounds like shiny rocks that Jamie would definitely be interested in. Has Jamie given up the tour of various different impressions of circus performances that she refers to as dancing? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's winding down now. So I join the group that seems to be coagulating at the bar. Say hey, what's up? Hey, Jamie. You never told me you were such a talented dancer. I'm impressed. About three people, like, look over and raise an eyebrow. At I that. look back and give them the, like, let me have it. <laughs> Vincent, did you say anything to J- Jamie as, as she approached? Oh, yeah. When Jamie gets over, I'm gonna say, hey, Jamie, why don't you uh, take a seat here? Got a business opportunity I was offered. Thought you might be interested. Oh, what's that? I had a run-in with a man. He uh, put me in touch with this, I don't know, some kind of crackpot. Says he might have found a vein of tourmaline. Looking to round up some miners, me and four others, to uh, try and draw it out of the ground. Thought that might have been something you were interested in. Yeah, sure. What kind of split did he offer? Taking 50 himself. You know, he found it, putting everything together. Figure that's reasonable. But 10% of the whole profits to everybody who joins in individually. So he's looking for five other people? Yep, that's right. Me and four others. Figure uh, Eden might be interested if he ain't too hungover. You know anything about blasting or drilling? Of course. All right. That might be helpful. You know anybody around here might, uh, might have a drill? There's a one laying there in Oliver's office. I've been looking at it all week. Really now? Oh. Oh. Oh, shit. Yeah, that one. Yeah. God damn. I mean, I've got some lighter drills. I mean, that one's, that one's Mr. Suarez's property. I, I know it's not getting used, but I feel weird about it. Do you think you have anything that would work? It. I don't see why it wouldn't. I mean, you might have to remove a little bit of the man's thigh, but, you know. It has been clean since then. All human chunks have been removed. All right, great. Just need uh, three more then. Let me make some calls. Okay. If I got a, I don't get cell phone reception, but uh, I, is there a pay phone around here? There is no pay phone. And by the way, your phone has stopped charging very well. Fair like, enough. <laughs> it, it is, it takes hours by the generator just to tick back up a few percent and seems to die really fast. 
Fair enough. I, it, it wasn't working too well out here anyway. What do I? What does Vincent think the most efficient way to try and wrangle up three miners might be? Bang on the their evening? doors. All right. Well, I know Eaton. Hopefully, Eaton knows some people more familiar with the specific types of explosives we'll need. You've probably met people at work too. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, I probably know people in the mine. If if yeah. I do know specific people who I think would be qualified, I'd like to go uh, go talk to them. Okay, you try and fi- uh, find Eaton and two others. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's uh, that's the idea. Well, roll for the two others. That would be a manipulation plus either finance, finance, etiquette, or craft. While he rolls, just during that conversation, you jerk. <laughs> um, Murph just tries to peacock a little bit, you know, trying to look strong and competent, even though she knows that she's going to get looked over. <laughs> it tries to present herself as, self, as, as, a, as a good miner. Yes. Leans Flex- hard on the right. counter, flexes a little. Flexes a little. I got two successes on two dice, and I was going with craft, by the way, if that influences the type of person I'm getting. Yeah. Got a, got a, a couple of the newer but competent miners, and Murph seems to be kind of like while you're uh, you're looking through your list of people, one, one of which was in the bar, seems to be leaning against the bar and flexing. You're, you're not sure what she's getting at. You, Murph, are you working? You've been, out? Uh, yeah, you've been hitting the old weights there, Murph. I've just been hitting the heavy weights of life, Vincent. Well, you're doing great, hon. Thank you. I try. I hear that you need some some able-bodied people to do some stuff. Uh, yeah, Look, Murph. I'm unemployed, I... and I'm getting bored. Uh, Murph, I mean you're you're great. I, I'm what? I think Spit that... it out. I'm not no, good. I think that you're great. Come along with us. I'll split my share with you. Uh, I've been informed that this mine might be a bit hazardous, and Murph, you're good luck charm, and I told the sheriff that I'd take care of you and I'd keep you out of trouble. I don't want to drag you into it. But I have a tendency of getting people out of trouble when they get into it. Flinching. Lots of it. Staring into her beer very silently. (laughs) I mean, I don't know. Is Oliver in uh, hearing range right now? Because I would like him to not be. Oh yeah, I think I haven't arrived yet. Perfect. I mean, I don't... I don't know if he's mentioned this, but I did totally help Oliver save that man's life. You were there. You saw what happened. I did. I'm just, I'm saying, he's a wonderful, competent doctor, but I'm I'm just saying. Oliver knows you helped him, for sure. (laughs) Murph, uh, if you, look, you're, you're a grown woman, you can make decisions on your own, but I don't want you going down into that mine, all right, where you could... You'd trip on something, and uh, then I just, I would have failed out everything I'm trying to do out here. Out of the... laughing at you. I hope that laughter's in diegetic. Like, just, Jamie just starts laughing when you say that Murph might trip on something. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, in, in one moment, I could have failed about everything I was tasked to do out here. And that doesn't sound great. If you want to come along, ride shotgun, and, uh, Keep an eye on things above ground. Make sure it's it's all on the level. I won't stop you. I I don't know. She looks just like crestfallen. I I, I kind of thought you were different, Benson, and I just walk away. Oh, oh, shit. oh, oh. Can, can I show up now? Val <laughs> slides her extra drink over to Vincent and nod <laughs> understandingly. Murph, please make a. A charisma plus etiquette roll. A pout roll. Oh, persuasion, persuasion. You got it. I almost feel like this should be leadership, weirdly enough. Ooh, All right. That's pretty good. Vincent, please. Okay, now successes to me. Please soak seven successes of willpower damage. Okay, I think I have six total. What does that mean? Roll your composure plus. Oh, what is what would what would hard heartedness be? It's uh, gotta be resolve. Yeah, I guess composure resolve. I got two. All right. You feel as if your heart is physically breaking. The look of disappointment in Murph's eyes that you did not believe in her is it is soul wrenching. I did. Damn it. I just don't want this girl to die. And I've been told that people could die. <sighs> yeah, but that's that's also just what Vincent is telling himself as he mm-hmm. drinks another <laughs> drink. 
and then stops after that one because he's got to get up early tomorrow. Okay, I go. I go after Murph because even even somebody who's completely as unaware and oblivious as to emotions and people and such is uh, not oblivious to that many uh, sighs and sad walk away. <laughs> you, it I'm suddenly like, dawns on Jamie. Murph is sad. Yeah, somebody's gonna let my emotions have to be at like eleven or thirteen out of ten for me to be like, <laughs> okay, there's something happening here. Okay, Murph, Jamie, uh, Jamie approaches you. Hey, Jamie. Hey, Murph. It'll be okay. You can come along whether he likes it or not. You just pile in my car and we'll go. Yeah, it's it's more about the principle of the thing that a person you know believes that you are so incapable as an adult functioning human that you will sprain your ankle by walking. It's kind of rough. Normal sexist bullshit. You know, I run into it all I, the time as a minor. I don't believe that that is strictly true. Uh, as you and I assume Val <laughs> have both been invited along to this particular journey, I think it's more a, you're a child that I must protect at all costs. I don't think anybody invited Val yet, actually. I assume that she's getting the invite. I never get the invite, Jamie. I'm telling you, you're invited. Come on, I believe in you. You're always so good at believing in other people. That is very good to hear. I appreciate you, Jamie. I'm heading home. All right. On the way back, Vincent, I think that you were going to, to go and find Eaton? Yeah, yeah. I was knocking on doors and uh, seeing how he was doing. You go back over to his place, and he is laying on a cot in his front yard, staring up at the sky. He's got a small bandage around two fingers, and... He has the look of someone who's too tired to sleep. Hey, Eaton, if I was to offer you a chance at some decent money tomorrow, would you be interested? I don't have much room to turn down money. Work. What have you got? Somebody found uh, what they think is a vein of tourmaline. Looking for some people to get it out. One day, a lot of cash, hopefully. Might be a bit hazardous, or so I've been informed, but... Pays well. Each volunteers up for 10% of the profits. Boss won't be happy. Mm. He is of the mind that all the tourmaline belongs to him. Even if he ain't staked out that mine? Don't much matter what's true. The boss thinks is what the boss thinks, but I won't tell him if you don't. No, I don't think he has a legal right, at the very least. A uh, legal right, what right, a right you have... Uh, that don't mean nothing. But honest day's work is an honest day's work. And you need me, I'll be there. What's the cut? All right. Ten, 10%. That's all I'm aware of. Depends on what we pull out of the ground. But if it's a lot, cut'll be a lot. I'll see what I can do. I'll be there. All right. I uh, figured I'd round up. I, I name off the two guys. Think they can handle a bit of demolitions and drilling? That should not be a problem. All right. Sounds good. If you got anything uh, that's yours and not the company's, I'd bring it along. I've got my tools. Sounds good. I'll see you bright and early. I'll swing by. He nods. He's staring up at the sky and, he's, and he says, Hey, where'd this deal come from? A man named Mammon came along. Found uh, this wacko. Mammon? Um, yeah, Sam Mammon. You know him? That name. Name sounds familiar. Yeah, he gave me a business card. He said he knew a guy. Apparently that's what he does, is he knows guys. He knows guys who knows guys and shows them to other guys. And uh, met a man named Rachma. Real wacko. But uh, from what I can tell, he seems to believe that there's money down there. This is a real office rocker, though. I'd keep on your toes around him and around the mine. He nods, says, uh, I'll keep my eyes out. You doing all right, Eaton? No. You want to talk about it? Can't say I do. Uh, when you do, I got ears. That's a uh, very sensitive of you, friend. Let's just say that uh, life is hard, money is short, but uh, I'll see you in the morning. All right. Well, here's to being not short on money after tomorrow, hopefully. See you then. He goes back to stargazing, and you go off to bed. Yeah, feeling like a piece of shit, but pretty convinced that it would be a terrible idea to drag someone with no training into a mine. You mean like you did to yourself a week ago? 
I was shown around on my first day by a professional miner on how to do the thing. <laughs> okay. This is an experimental mine. This is a, a dangerous, wacko, crazy mine. Maybe filled with unknown dangers. <laughs> and it's it's a big gamble mine. That sounds like a horrible place to bring the person <laughs> whose life and well-being is my only real mission right now. You know who's a pretty good gambler, though? Murph. Murph is a pretty <laughs> good gambler. I mean, I believe if we brought her down there and she was okay, we would find more tourmaline, for sure. Murph has such significant power over each and every one of our characters. <laughs> this, is, this is bad. Maximum She's, our, our, She's our, our group glue. For me and Oliver, I, I mean, she's literally the reason we're we're not like in prison right now. So I I guess I show up right after Vincent left and walk up behind Val and say, "Well, it's good to see you again. We've been out every night without Jesus you, and it's Christ. been." Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to surprise you. <laughs> it's just so exciting to see you again. We've been missing your delightful serenades. What? Oh, uh, I'm. He looks at her, like, real quick and realizes that she probably doesn't remember, and she's like, don't worry, we just had a very good time whilst inebriated. Oh, goodness. What? Uh, Murph <laughs> no, looks no, 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 distraught. No, no, no. No. <laughs> you need to clarify that statement right now, Oliver. Oh, please don't. <laughs> oh, no. We just had a wonderful evening together. Don't, don't you worry about it. Don't you dare. <laughs> Oliver, I will, I will find a way to make you feel pain like you have never felt if you do not. Wait, what are you implying? <laughs> what are you implying? Oh, I mean merely that we were together in the bar here. We both had some drinks. You convinced me to drink quite more than I, I had hoped. But we had we had a blast. You sang, you played the guitar. It was wonderful. Oh, oh thank God. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, Val, take one sanity damage. Yes! <laughs> oh my god. Can I get it back once I realize that no, that didn't happen? You it was a very it? real thought that went through your mind. There's no getting rid of it. <laughs> there. Oh god. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take the sanity damage. Okay. <laughs> I see Jamie and Murph over there and I want to say, Murph, shall I see you bright and early in the office tomorrow? We've got uh, a little bit of more blood to get off that machine before we give it back. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> you no seem a little le bit less like a ray of sunshine than you usual say. I have seen the clouds, Oliver. The clouds are gathering. Well, that is mighty disturbing. Is there anything I can do about it? Uh, can I have a hug? Oh, darling, absolutely. <laughs> and just like Excellent. wraps her up in this big bear hug. Yes, and it feels so good. Pats her on the back. Oh, there, there. And Those clouds will go away. <laughs> and Oliver is still the only one who knows nothing about the mining adventure. Oh, yep. ov over her shoulder, I'm looking at Jamie and I'm like, mouthing, what's wrong? <laughs> uh, and I speak up, oh, what's wrong was Vince was being a dick. Uh, I, hey, no. Can I borrow the drill? <laughs> can I borrow uh, the drill? I, what for? I need to drill some holes, duh. Well, obviously, but I was supposed to give it back it? tomorrow. Uh, oh, no. what, what excuse am I supposed to give why I didn't give it back? Oh, oh, I could say there's some, some man thigh in it. I was about to say we could get a couple of chips of bones and wedge it in there, show it to him, see we need to clean this out, and then we could Why free up another day. Lie to people? Just well, to other, well, he would want recompense for such a thing. Do you have the, the scratch to cover that? Probably. I could probably pull it together, but it would wipe me out for the week. I mean, I assume know. I have enough resources to like rent it, I guess. It's about 40 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Bro. Which is not a lot of money to someone that isn't you. Well, I mean, like, we could shove, you know, some bones in there and show it to him and be like, oh, we still need to clean it. Or we could just not mention it and hope he doesn't show up for it. I have a mission. Mm, I do prefer those, but, and I like where, I, I'm my, simultaneously very pleased and proud of you and also disturbed. I'm learning. I'm like, I'm like you do you. Can I borrow it or not? Simple question. Look, yes, but you're drilling holes, but for whom and where? 
Oh, Vincent has a job lined up. He wants to go d- drill and dig out some tourmaline out of the earth tomorrow. Some shady character and hired him. And he hasn't mentioned it to me. This is very disturbing. Yeah, that's what he was being a jerk about to Murph. He said she couldn't come along. I was going to split my share with her. It wasn't even going to cost him anything. He said he was afraid she was going to trip or some bullshit. Yeah, he said that, like, he was afraid that I was going to trip over something, and I assumed that that meant that he doesn't think that I can even, like, walk on my own two feet. And I, I don't know. I'm a little disappointed. Well, I would say that that was a decision he made based off of fear rather than a lack of love. But I'm sure he'll come around once he sleeps on it. Murph, would you be willing to come back to the office and uh, we can work up a convincing fiction? Sure. Assuming omission is not enough. Of course. Yeah. Other- otherwise, we, we, we work up like, yep, it's just harder to clean out than we thought. Okay. Biohazards, yes. Very unhealthy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> AIDS, question mark? Anyhow, you guys all get back to, uh, get back to, uh, back to your homes, get to bed, and you're up by first light. To the final decision And the world will break apart today And the world will break apart Today I just realized that uh, when Vince and Oliver play cards, uh, they they like have to like really quick check the house and make sure Jen- <laughs> Murph is not there. Hey, because you don't want to get shot. Oh no! Whichever, it, minor, uh, whichever set of miners you're playing with. No, well that too, I guess. Uh, but more so that like if she's there, we still play, but we just accept that like there's no there's no gambling involved. <laughs> No, no, no. You just feel bad about yourself if you lose because it means you've you pissed off Murph. Oh, no. Oh, that's why we had to stop playing. <laughs> I know. I mean, maybe I just try to influence it so that Oliver wins one time and then Vincent wins the next time and then Oliver and just... <laughs> you, just you just want it to be fair. <laughs> fair and even so no one feels bad. Whoever's had the worst day wins. <laughs>